Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to use expression tags in Ignition. All right, so this is obviously a continuation in the Ignition tutorial series. Uh, we've recently started on the channel. If you do have any questions about how to download Ignition for makers, what Ignition is, why you need it, what an expression tag is, be sure to check out the playlist on the channel. I will be adding all Ignition tutorials to that playlist and hopefully building a pretty deep uh, backlog of how to get started and how to use Ignition and eventually doing some pretty cool and in-depth automation slash makers uh, projects with it. So um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. But I'll be assuming for this video that you at least have downloaded Ignition, know how to get into the designer and want to know how to use expression tags. So I've already built out a little bit of a framework here that has a Boolean, meaning a bit, meaning on or off, true or false. And you can see I have a toggle checkbox for it on the screen that I've built. And you can see the tag value itself in this browser on the lower left, also changing when I change the bit. Then I built out a little just plus, uh, minus two buttons on either side of a counter. And these are just letting me change the value of my integer tag. And then I have a text entry box here uh, just where I can enter values and change the value of a string tag. So the reason I built out these three different types of tag is because I want to obviously new tag, um, new standard tag, expression tag. I want to show you how to use expression tags and I want to show you how to interact with three different types of tags in your expression. So that's why I did that. And let's just call this expression tag one. It's a nice descriptive name. We'll make it an expression and we will make it a Boolean because what this expression is going to be doing is evaluating multiple other tags and making a decision whether those conditions are true or whether those conditions are false. So we'll come down to expression and we'll hit the pencil. So now we are in the expression editor. Uh, if you ever get like super duper lost and confused, um, these uh, fields in the top right, there's a little plus and an equal sign. And these are some of the most common fields that you'll be using in expression tags. So I find them pretty useful. If you ever forget that like or, or and, or less than, uh, or equal to is, uh, is this specific symbol. It's nice to have a little refresh available to you right there. But to be honest, uh, expression tags fill a pretty tight niche in ignition because when things get really complicated, you don't necessarily want to be using expression tags. You want to be using like Python scripting, which we'll talk about in future videos. But the purpose of expression tags is to sort of evaluate a few things in a field. Uh, you could think of a tank, right? That could have multiple alarm issues. It could be at high, high level. It could be at high, high pressure. It could be at a uh, high, high temperature. And if any of those things are true, you want to turn an alarm on. Uh, maybe it's a strobe light, maybe it's an alert, maybe it's an email that gets sent out to like maintenance or something. So that is kind of the perfect time to use an expression tag. And uh, to use an expression tag, we're basically saying we want to look at the value of other tags and let that determine the outcome of this tag. Uh, it's basically like, let me read values about other tags and make decisions uh, what, about what I should do. I said that already. All right, so let's copy the path of our boolean tag and i went kind of fast there but if you want to look at the value of another tag inside of your expression one easy way to do that is go to the tag that you want to look at the value of and right click and go down to copy path that will give you a uh, text which when if you paste it into curly brackets will look like this and this is going to give you uh, that tag and it's telling this expression tag explicitly where to go and look at the value. So first thing, let's say we want the outcome of this tag to be determined uh, by whether or not that Boolean tag is true. So when this thing is checked, it'll say enabled and that means it's true and so this will become true. Now we're going to use the expression and, which is two ampersands. And now we're going to look at the integer tag. So I could do it exactly the same uh, way. I could copy the path just like I just did, and I could paste it in here. But uh, one additional pretty cool little thing you can do inside the expression browser is this insert tag button, which is a little tag icon over on the right. You hit insert tag and uh, it'll open up a tag browser. So I can go to my folder for tutorial tags, my expression tag tutorial, and I can click on that integer tag and I can hit okay. 
And I can say, uh, so now integer tag and I want it greater than two. And what you guys notice is kind of interesting is rather than all this first gobbledygook, what I get is square bracket period square bracket. And that is because it's telling this expression. You don't have to go p look through the entire tag browser to find this tag. It's in the same host folder and location as you are. So this dot is just a way to get uh, your expression optimized to look at a closer location. So really we could go back and we could control C this into here because the Boolean tag is obviously in the same location as well. But for now, let's do just those two things. Let's say if the Boolean tag is true and if the integer tag is greater than two, then we want uh, that to determine the outcome of our expression tag, okay? And I'm intentionally not using the string yet because there's one thing we're gonna talk about when we get to that. But let's go ahead and make the expression tag. And uh, just so it's a little bit more useful for us, let's go ahead and change our, oh, yeah, I left it in run mode. Let's go ahead and change the text on this uh, to look at the expression tag, so it's still looking at my first tag. Let's look at the expression tag, which is just gonna say true or false, and let's real quick, let's just transform it to tell us explicitly that false will mean conditions not met. And I'm not really focusing on stuff like uh, how to transform uh, and what I'm doing right now. Conditions all met, okay? All I'm doing is taking the true false outcome of the expression tag we just made and saying whether or not the conditions are met in a little uh, label up top, okay? So if you remember, we said the integer has to be greater than two and we said this bit has to be enabled. So the bit is enabled, but the integer is exactly two. Let's go ahead and add one to the integer. And now it says three. And now the expression tag says conditions all met. Now, if I were to disable the bit, it says conditions not met again. And what's really interesting is we didn't set up our expression tag to be like cyclical or anything. We left it on the default, which was event driven. And event driven is really interesting because event driven means it's looking at changes of any of the tags that it is addressing in its expression. So it knows that when this bit changes, it needs to do a new evaluation because the values that it's comparing to are uh, changing underneath it. So it's a really cool function of ignition expression tags. If we were to take this integer back down under two, we would get an issue. Um, well, it would just say conditions not met, not an issue. Now let's take a look at how to incorporate a string because it's a little bit tricky and I left one thing out of this expression on purpose to show you the difference. I think now is a perfect time to take a quick pause and talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay is a long-term supporter of the Lamaster Tech channel, and I love working with them because their products and services are all about empowering makers. As their name suggests, the core of their business is manufacturing PCBs or printed circuit boards. This is such a cool way for hobbyists and makers to turn their electronic designs into super high quality and professional grade circuit boards. Beyond that, they also have the ability to support all your prototyping needs with high quality 3D printing and metal fabrication as well. Be sure to check them out at the description below this video and thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring the video. All right, now let's get right back to the tutorial. Okay, now let's take a look at how to take that expression tag one step further and incorporate our string tag here. All right, so let's go ahead and say we also want to keep an eye on the string and make sure that uh, it doesn't equal a certain code, right? Like you might have a status for a tank uh, and it says like filling, heating, mixing, idle. Um, and you want to make sure that tag is not idle. So we could say, uh, and we want to make sure the string tag is not equal to, and not equal to is exclamation mark equal sign. And let's just pick uh, Pete because that's my name and <laughs> that's something that is easy for me to remember while I type it. All right, and let's go hit apply and let's hit save. And now I'm gonna say, uh, all right, this is greater than three and my string tag is not equal to Pete, which is great. Um, but if I hit enter, you'll see conditions not met. So it's still working like that, which is really cool. Um, but one weird nuance that you just should be aware of is if you want to do something different like and uh, length, of the string tag is not equal to zero. So you're just basically saying, I don't want to have an empty string. 
if we hit apply and we hit apply and we hit OK, um, it says conditions all met right now. And when we hit uh, delete it out, it seems to be working properly because the string goes to nothing. It might seem like an unnecessary step because everything was working fine without it, but just to show you kind of how it's interchangeable but still important to know about, I'm going to add dot value to the end of all of them. And what you'll see is they still all individually work. Like I can still turn off uh, enabled disabled. I can still make the integer go below three and I can still make this uh, go uh, empty. So I hope the outcome of this video is crystal clear. This is a really neat, powerful way that you can get one tag that tells you the status of multiple things in your process. And you can use that to do uh, all sorts of useful stuff downstream. So it's like doing programming uh, inside of Ignition, which is nice because a lot of old SCADA software, you mainly wanted to do as much programming as you could inside like the PLC or the devices that were coming into your SCADA and you want to minimize developing like code and uh, different formulas and stuff inside of the SCADA, inside of the HMI itself. But Ignition really changes that in my opinion. Bringing raw tags in and doing math and calculations on them inside of a project absolutely makes logical sense uh, using Ignition. So I think this is a super cool topic and uh, I use these tags all the time. So be sure to let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. If you have any questions about this stuff I kind of did on the side to set up this example, let me know as well. And be sure to let me know what you want to see next on the channel. I do a lot of development in, in Ignition, so if you have questions about how to do any sort of specifics with that, just let me know. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.